intervals, right? Then uh, the red line is how we divide the interval, right? So, we divide. so from minus 5 to minus 2.5, divide interval. From minus 2.5 to uh, uh, zero, there's another interval, right? From zero to plus 2.5 is one interval. From 2.5 to plus 5 is one interval. I mentioned that every time, uh, whenever a sample point falls in the interval, like, more, like this one, like minus uh, two plus three, right? Minus two plus three. Then we will round it towards the center, okay? Towards the center of the corresponding uh, interval. So, uh, after that, I mean, as I mentioned, we are, we are using two uh, digits for this one. So, for the lowest zero zero will be not the I mean the center of this interval will be uh, minus three point seven five volts. Then zero one will be minus one one two five volts. One zero one point two five one one three point seven five. Right. Then I mentioned our question is given a uh, uh, sample point minus 2.3 volts, right? Minus 2.3 volts. Uh, we are looking for the corresponding uh, contest value, right? Contest value, the last time we forgot the class. Right? Then we need to find out how many levels. So from minus 5. We count the, I mean, the thickness here from minus 2.3 to minus 5. Now after that, we chop into layers. Then uh, we found out the value, okay, the, the, I mean, the number of layers is given by these formulas. Now after that, we need to find out the corresponding compact value. So I mentioned this, you can use this formula from middle rise compact, all right? So C will be 5 volt, S is the corresponding uh, value of minus 2.3. Then uh, basically this part is the, the statement or the difference between the sample point and then the bottom value, the minimum value. Now after that, divide by the, uh, the interval, then you look for the flow value, the flow value. Then from minus 5, Plus this one, then you plus third out by two because the context value is always in the middle of the corresponding interval. So in the end, you can get the value of uh, minus 1.5, 1.25. That's why is the context value, right? Because context value. 
So in order to get the quantization error, so we take the difference, then uh, we take the absolute value, right? minus 2.3 minus this one, plus 1.25. So the corresponding error will be 1.05 volts, right? So this one is how we uh, use a simple example to illustrate the question uh, in tutorial five, right? In tutorial five, uh, the number of, what, what, what is the resolution? The resolution is 80, right? 8 bit, you, you are going to have a, a 2 to the power 8, which is 102 bit 8, right? One, no. 256, yeah, 256 uh, intervals, right? So that's why I use uh, two bit, I mean four uh, intervals. It's uh, easier for you to visualize the difference, right? Uh, so that the, the theory is the same. So next I'm going to show you the difference between, uh, this one is called a middle-rise, okay? middle-rise uh, type of uniform condenser. This one is called mean strength. Did you notice the difference? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at the two curves, did you see any difference? This one is called the middle rise, this one is called mid. Because they sometimes don't mean flat, flat, mean flat. You notice the difference. The difference is uh, the price one. Of course, we're talking about in the middle, right? In the middle, this one is a middle right, which means if your input is zero volts, right? Zero volts, then the corresponding uh, uh, condensed value is not zero volt. This one is called middle right, right? If your input is current, uh, um, uh, zero volts, then the corresponding condensed value is zero volt. This one is called mid flat, right? We call mid flat, right? It's all depends on how you uh, uh, treat the, the signal in the middle, okay? Because here you connect like to uh, either a positive value or negative value, you can have a zero volt the conductor value. You see, the, here the stack is denotes the conductor value. For example, uh, minus four volt, minus three volt, minus two volt, uh, maybe zero, minus zero point five, then zero point five. Right? But you, the conductor value, you don't have a zero volt. Here on this one, the condensed value you have a zero volt, right? So that this can mean zero volt. Then uh, for this one, if we draw the figure, we uh, see something like this. Which means this one is called a mid-rise. Mid because 
you see that if the input to the little world, so you either connect to minus 1.25 or plus 1.25, right? So that's why it's called mid right, get mid right from that. So that's why it's given in the uh, question 4 of tutorial 5, right? So now, uh, you know so later, I will scan this one. I will scan this one. I put it on here now. No need to worry about this one. So let's move on to our lecture notes. Right? So lecture eight, we are going to look at the transmitter, the receiver, and noise. Okay? I mentioned uh, for any communication system, uh, we consider three fundamental components, right? Transmitter, the channel, the receiver. So basically the noise is everywhere inside the channel, right? So this uh, we're going to look at how do we uh, quantify the noise, and how do we reduce the noise. Then uh, the transmitter fundamentals, receiver fundamentals, after that we talk about the noise. Then the noise factor, noise figure, and, and the, I mean the values to quantify the noise. I mean, how do we measure whether the noise is strong or the noise is very weak, right? So the uh, radio transmitter, um, the main function is to take the input from the units from a sensor. For example, the microphone, or the video camera, or the temperature sensor, or other type of sensor. The sensor basically converts the physical phenomenon into a corresponding voltage and current signals. After that, we use that signal as an information signal to perform a certain modulation. Right? And, uh, uh, after the modulation, it goes through the power amplifier, then we can send it out. So in this paper, we, uh, we are using the uh, um, ele electronic communication as an example for us to study the communication system. So in the end, the signal is always in terms of uh, uh, electrical signal. Right? Either it goes through the antenna, it will send it through wireless channel, or it goes through a coaxial cable, or even through the fiber. I mean, you know the light is actually a, a type of electro, electromagnetic signals. The only difference is the light the frequency is much higher. I mean, the light is the same as the uh, wireless signal. For example, your mobile phone is working. Because the light is in terms of terahertz, the mobile phone we are using is in terms of gigahertz. Then the radio, for example, FM is in, in terms of uh, mega, uh, megahertz, the AM is in terms of uh, kilohertz, right? So then in this way you know the, the difference. So we have got it here. AM, so we are looking for kilohertz, FM, then in terms of uh, megahertz, right? For example, the Wi-Fi, or the and the cellular phone is in terms of gigahertz. Then the fiber, for example, or the uh, light of the laser. This one is in terms of terahertz. Right? Yes. Is that the only way? Uh, is that why they um, invented the photo amplifier to convert the Yes, the that one is to convert the electric signal into uh, photons. It's actually the <coughs> unit of the light. Because the light, you know, the light you see here is, I mean, seems to be continuous, but it's not continuous. It's actually one portion of portion of photons coming out from the light. Because our uh, uh, human eyes, we cannot. Uh, Differentiate uh, something happens within zero point one second, right? Which means if you see something, for example, if you see my 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 pen goes too fast, you see basically one line instead of one dot dot dot. 
So that's why it's what's happening in the light. Your eyes actually receiving a portion of portion like the, I mean you can treat like a beans or like a, a, a ping pong ball okay, coming out from a, the light source, for example, the light beer or the LED. So later, that, that was uh, uh, predicted by Einstein, so later uh, was proved by experiment. I mean the light is not continuous, it's a discrete. So each photon, the energy is uh, proportional to the frequency. Remember the Planck constant, right? Planck constant can give you the corresponding energy. Uh, even for the value signal, okay, that one seems to be a continuous, but that one is also a discrete signal, right? So uh, kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, terahertz. I mean, this one can go even higher, but currently our technology uh, at this thing. <coughs> because you can have, for example, uh, X-ray. I mean, alpha, uh, beta, gamma, uh, this, the radiation, right? The radiation. The frequency will be higher than the visible light. Visible light is in terms of terahertz. Then the radiations are happening in the space with much higher frequency. Right? So in order to detect, for example, in order to detect the signal from a higher frequency, then you need a corresponding receiver, that's like an antenna, to pick up a signal. Right? That's the uh, I mean, like our human eyes, like an antenna to pick up the visible light, right? It's an, a function like an antenna for our human body. So the transmitter is the corresponding electronic unit to take the corresponding information signal, uh, to modulate the carrier, then after that, you go through the power amplifier to boost up the power level, then you can send through a cable or through a wireless channel, the main purpose is to send this one for a longer distance, right? Remember, um, for the communication system, we have uh, the key animates the signal attenuation, right? Because the signal you send out <coughs> uh, due to the impurities inside the medium, for example, the, in the copper wire, you have other types of uh, atoms inside. So when the electrons travel inside the copper wire, then the part of the energy is transferred to uh, like uh, become heat, right? So the signal becomes weaker and weaker. So that's why uh, before you send out the signal, usually you boost up and you're using a power amplifier to boost up the signal uh, to like in a, like a watts or kilowatt even a gigawatt. I mean, all depend on the distance you're going to set. Yes. Um, if you put too much power to the maple, would it um, cause a like heat and uh, insulation? Yes, that's why. Uh, um, that's why later, if you work in a company, for example, designing a cost, I mean, a communication uh, system, right? So you need to look at the the, the specification of the cable. Yeah. Because you cannot put too, too much power on the cable, otherwise you will burn the cable. And then you will yeah. need repeaters for the. Speed. Exactly. This is this the question six in oh, okay. the area. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean the assignment two, right? Uh, okay, assignment yeah. two. Yeah, working. Yeah. I'm going to work on it. <laughs> so this I uh, give you some tips on assignment two. Right? Just that's why we, we need repeaters. Even for this one, uh, for the AM, we have the repeaters, right? Because uh, I mean you see the the antenna on the sky tower. They have a lot of antennas. But even when send out like in terms of kilowatts, if you go to the, 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 the tip of the South Island, you may not pick up the signal. When, I mean, in between you need another, like a, they call the relay station. Relay station is, if you pick up the signal, then you re-amplify, you send out the heat. Right. This, this one is similar, like a, uh, you, I mean, that, that, that's the purpose of the, the one in, in China, the, the, the grid wall. The grid wall, you see the different towers. Just in the old days, they don't have the wireless channel. 
So whenever the, you know, the enemies uh, uh, comes, they burn something, they, they saw the smoke. The, so when the soldier on the, one of the towers saw the smoke, they burn the same type of material. This, they, they create a smoke again. So this one is the uh, Asian type of optical communication. Right? You saw the smoke, you know the enemies come. Okay, that one is also another form of the relay space. I mean, relay space. So this one for the TV, for the AM radio, where you can relay station. Even for the Wi-Fi, we also have the relay station. Right? Because the, like this one here, this one we have the uh, bi-phone connection. A school of fiber or coaxial cable, but in different buildings of the the bipod, I mean, how you connect this one to the router is through the uh, coaxial cables. You can treat them on that array stage. Okay, so the, the requirements, okay, it, the four basic requirements. First one is the carrier. Remember, you order to transmit the signal, then you need to follow the regulation. You need to send to the corresponding channel you have the license to transmit, right? Because you cannot uh, transmit at any channel at your own way. For example, those FM radios, AM radios, um, <clears throat> the operators, they have already uh, purchased their license. So if you want to transmit at, at the same channel, then you need to uh, I mean, ask for permission, right? Otherwise, you will get their signal corrupted. So later you may receive a notice from the lawyer. Uh, the second one is, you must have a certain form of modulation, right? Remember the main purpose of modulation uh, is to make sure the signal is suitable for the corresponding channel, right? For example, if you are going to send through wireless, then you need to use higher frequency, right? Higher frequency. Um, so the frequency cannot be too high. I, I mean, a higher. I mean, it's in terms of kilo or megahertz. Why they choose, uh, for example, why they choose uh, uh, AM using kilohertz, FM for megahertz? It's due to the attenuation happening in the atmosphere, right? You know, in the atmosphere, you got the water or vapor, you got oxygen, you got nitrogen, other types of gas. I mean. Then this atmosphere, they have different attenuation at different frequency, right? So th th this one, uh, if you are interested, then you can look at uh, attenuation. You can look at this one, right? This this one they have a corresponding curve. So this one will show you. Uh, of the corresponding frequency, at which frequency attenuation is higher. I mean, you see this one at 100 gigahertz, I mean, almost like 990 uh, gigahertz, basically 70, around 70 gigahertz. The attenuation by oxygen is very high. Right? So when you choose the corresponding uh, frequency, we are going to try to avoid those peak values, right? Because at that point, if you transmit at that corresponding frequency, then it costs a lot of power, right? I mean, this one is a similar when you plan the road, right? For example, if you are drive from uh, Auckland to Hamilton, of course, you, when you choose the road, you choose the road with a better condition. Similarly yeah. here, when you plan the frequency, choose the corresponding channel. Then you choose the channel with less attenuation, right? The, the less the attenuation, the less power you require to transmit. Yes. Yeah, is that why they have the satellite window where they help you avoid that specific time? Uh, yes. I mean, the satellites, they choose a corresponding frequency. They can go through the atmosphere. I mean, just atmosphere, it got several layers. Some of the frequency, it's very hard to penetrate through the, the layers. So that's why uh, uh, satellite communication is usually in terms of from 1K to 6K, I mean, uh, up to 10 gigahertz, something like this. Uh, also depends on the, the height of the satellite. 
the some satellites is further away from the ground, so they use different frequencies. Right? Then I, I mentioned for the rocket, uh, they they usually using the megahertz, the megahertz. So it's uh, easier for the signal to go through the different layer of the atmosphere. So this one is show you the different uh, 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 attenuation, right? The red one is the attenuation by water, just the vapor of the water. Then the green one is by oxygen. We may have other types of gas coming inside the atmosphere. So the, the total effect is a combined, again the combined effect. So you will see how they choose the, the channel, right? Uh, then uh, th this one show you uh, uh, probably uh, <coughs> a combined, right? The combined uh, attenuation, right? Combined attenuation. You see a different point, the, the attenuation is different. And that's why uh, usually those points with uh, less attenuation is already very crowded. <coughs> There's a lot of transmission are happening in that part, right? Next one is the, uh, the power. I mean, before you send out the signal, you need to make sure that uh, the, the power level of the signal is enough to travel for a long distance, right? A long distance. Uh, later, I'm going to show you the communication data rate, right? For example, how fast you can push your data through the channel actually depends on a number of factors. Power is one of the factors. I mean, the stronger your signal, the, the, the higher the data rate you can achieve, right? Last one is the impedance matching, right? Impedance matching. Just now before you class began, you saw the Smith chart. That's why it's called impedance matching. Evidence matching is uh, this uh, is a very fundamental theory in electronic circuit, right? Because you have the, for example, you have a power source, you have another load, right? So you want to send the power to the load. You need to make sure the impedance is matched. Otherwise, the, the signal will be bounced back, right? It's like uh, you just swing a uh, ping pong towards the wall, then the load will, will bounce back. The signal is a, a function almost like the same, right? So you, you give some power inside, this, the, all, I mean, that all of the power may not go through to the load. Part of the power is reflected. So that's one uh, you probably have learned in the uh, fields and waves, right? Yeah. The Smith's chart. So uh, the, the fundamental theory for the maximum power transfer is uh, uh, simple. I mean, for DC circuit, just the source e, uh, resistance should be equal to the load resistance, right? So you can get the maximum power transfer. Then for the complex, for, me, for example, if your load re, uh, uh, impedance in terms of uh, resistance, you have certain inductance or capacitance, they call reactance, right? So the load impedance must be the, the conjugate, right? So the loads must be the conjugate of the source, right? I mean, if is that one is a DC, this one is simple, right? For AC, you must look at the conjugate. So what is the conjugate? Conjugate you learn in mathematics, right? So A plus PTA conjugate is A minus B. Some students will ask, what, what is J, right? Remember J, uh, I, I mean, these are the complex numbers. I do your complex numbers, right? Um, so this one, this one is the K difficulty you're going to encounter when you design an uh, electronic circuit, right? For example, the one you learned in your embedded digital system, uh, the key part is the, the, for example, the clock signal. How, how do you make sure that the signal uh, works according to the clock signal? In, in analog circuitry, I mean, for example, you design a transmitter or receiver. 
the k difficulty is the impedance maximum. It's very difficult, right? Because most of the time, the signal is uh, working in the AC domain. It's not a DC signal. So you need to uh, try to achieve the impedance matching. Sometimes it's impossible to match the impedance. Why? Because, for example, your load most of the time is uh, a, a real number. For example, the speaker, just most of them is purely resistive. Or, or, or another, like uh, uh, the heater, or another type of, it's just, just a resistance. But your, your source may be reactive, which means you've got some react, uh, resistance, your <coughs> inductance or capacitance. I mean, it's like you, you want to match a real number to a complex number. Nearly impossible, right? So in that way, in the Smith chart, just make that one to be close to the sensor, as close as possible, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called the, uh, although you have a slight impedance in mismatching, but the power transfer should be not very much. So these are the four requirements, right? <coughs> so if you look at the simple uh, transmitter, it means mean something like this, right? For example, the crystal. Well, what's the function of a crystal? Yeah, just uh, produce a oscillation signal, right? For example, it can be a square wave, can be a something we call a periodic signal. I mean, that's the property of the Material, here's the material, because inside the material, the atom is uh, like, uh, oscillating, vibrating, right? Then that's why you generate a certain signal. So you can treat this one as a message. I mean, treat one, this one as a modulating signal. Then this one is the oscillator. Oscillator, what was the function of oscillator? It just to, yeah, generate a carrier right, at a certain frequency, uh, like a sinusoidal waveform. Uh, so if you go through in this way, I mean like you multiply, yeah? this one you multiply with the carrier, so what is this one? A switch, right, switch. You can turn it on and off, right? I mean this one is a very fundamental on-off transmitter, right? If you turn it on, you got signal going to the problem device. Turn it off, I mean the carrier is not generated, and then the corresponding transmission is Disrupted, right? So you go through a common amplifier, he goes the antenna. Of course, uh, later you have other papers to learn how do you design a common amplifier, how do you design the antenna. Everywhere along the circuit, you need to consider impedance matching. For example, here, the power don't inside the common amplifier, you need to make sure all sides impedance are matched. So I'm talking about here, right? here, so if you look at the input impedance, for example, the input impedance here, then the impedance here, for example, this one may be the output impedance from the output impedance from the oscillator. I mean, these two must be matched. So from a power amplifier here, for example, here, then these two must be matched. Right? I mean, the outputs from a power amplifier, you got a certain impedance. Then the input to the antenna, you got another impedance. You need to make sure they are matched. Right? Once they are matched, you got the power flows through the system. If they are not matched, then the power will be wasted. Right? It will be wasted. Sometimes, if the uh, <coughs> impedance mismatching is so bad, you may burn your, your transmitter. Which means, you're trying to send out this power to the antenna, but the antenna is not accepting the power. Then you will be reflected back to the power pipe. Then you may burn this one. You may burn this one. So that's why sometimes your power pipe, you got this kind of smell, or, or, the, or sometimes you, the, the, the capacity is like, kind of right? That's how you deal with uh, uh, 
mismatching between the units. Right? Of course, if you connect the capacitor with I mean, uh, uh, different polarity, for example, you connect the polar terminal to the uh, lower voltage, then the plus terminal to a higher and the negative uh, terminal to a higher voltage, of course, you will burn the capacitor immediately, right? Have you ever burned the capacitor before in the lab? No? Yeah. I mean, if you haven't done, you can try one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you still have a chance because you're still the third year. <laughs> Otherwise, you can buy your own one to burn it. <laughs> Okay, so this one, if you have this component, which means, for example, if you uh, like to try out this kind of circuit in, in your home or in the lab, you can get this component, you can have a try. Yeah. Right. You, you may ask, how do you generate this one? Your function generator, right? Function generator can function like a, can function like a, a oscillator. This one, uh, and this one is called, and you can find a lot of uh, crystal chips. How many fire uh, inside the lab we also have this one? Even if you don't have this one, you don't want to send to the antenna, you can connect this part to the oscilloscope, then you can see the weak ball. Okay, you understand that. Okay, next one, the different types of uh, 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 transmitter, AM, right? AM. FM, they are quite similar. I mean, single side one, this one I mentioned in the left. Uh, so after you generate the 4 AM, remember 4 AM, you have the two side bands, you have the carrier, then you remove that carrier. How do you remove that carrier? Just reduce, reduce the, uh, uh, the amplitude of the VC, then you got a, you said the left, you got a button. You tune it, you can make sure the carrier is coming. Right? The carrier. Then after that, you can use the band pass filter. You can choose one of the band. For example, you can choose the lower side band, you can choose the upper side band. So this one is called a single side band. Next one is the receiver. But the receiver side is the um, performing the reverse operation. Uh, as compared to the transmitter, right? So the re receiver will pick up the signal say, from the air using an antenna, then the uh, signal is very weak, right? So how do we pick up the signal? Pick up the signal is usually through the antenna. I mean, the antenna design will give you the corresponding frequency, right? Then another one is you got the resonant circuit. Resonant circuit, which means you can tune the circuit. So if the resonant frequency of the circuit match to the corresponding incoming signal frequency, then you have the maximum power transfer to the resonant circuit. So depends on the bandwidth of the resonant circuit. I mean, like what you have done in a one, right? Bandwidth of the resonant circuit given by the resonant frequency divided by Q. Right? Q is the quality factor. The larger the Q, which means the, this one will be the narrow, right? The narrower the moment this one, the higher the selectivity. Which means the higher the selectivity, you can tune to a particular frequency exactly, get exact to the frequency. Right? So usually we consider the bandwidth. Let me ask you, what do we consider minus 3 dB? What is the significance of minus 3 dB? Yeah, I mean, of course, this one, for example, the value is higher, this one is lower. Minus 3 dB, how much lower? Does it correlate to the over square root of 2? Yeah, of oh, course. This one is related to minus, I mean, square root of two, right? Square root of two is we will half of the power, right? I told you, minus three dB is the power is the half of the peak power. Minus six dB, another half, 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 which means one quarter, right? So every minus three dB will take half. So minus nine dB, 
one of y, right? So that's why I, uh, usually for communication system we look at the minus 3D. 3D means uh, half of the peak power. It's considered as uh, acceptable, which means if the signal is uh, like a half of the peak value, it's still acceptable. Below that, it's not acceptable. So that's why we look at the bandwidth. <coughs> so the selectivity, um, to look at this one. For example, this one is a, a very simple AM receiver. Uh, if you have the components, you can try. You can pick up the signal. This one, the antenna. And you probably want how, how do I make an antenna? Antenna is very easy. It's just using a long wire, right? Using a long, like a copper wire, or even aluminum, or even kind of metal wire, right? What is this part? Transformer, right? You see T, usually in the circuit, you know it's transformer, right? T, you know transformer. Where can I get a transformer? I mean, in the uh, a lot of uh, circuit, you have a transformer. If you don't have a transformer, you can make your own one. You just need some uh, copper wires. You need a uh, permanent uh, magnet just to run the wires in the call. Then make sure you have a uh, two set of coil. Then you can make the transformer. Right? This one. What's the difference between this one and this one? One's variable? Yeah, this one with the arrow, which means you can change the value. I change the value. You still have the old time of the AM receiver, you know you can turn it. It's a button, you can turn the one. Yeah, what you are doing is actually changing this value. But this one is fixed, right? This one is fixed. Let, let me ask you one more question. <laughs> Because in the capacitor, you have seen this one, right? Have, have you seen this one? What's the difference in between? I mean, this one, this one, yes. you got a two parallel one, then this one, you got a curly one, you got a flat. What's the difference? It's polarized capacitor. Right. This one is a polarized, right? This one is polarized, this one is number of PGMs. Whenever you want to connect this one, <laughs> pay attention to the polarity. Make sure you connect. Like, uh, otherwise, you may you know, probably hear the sound. <laughs> right? Uh, so that one is the variable one. Right? You got a uh, variable one, which means you can change the variable. Right? Okay. Let me ask one more question related to electronics. What is this? What is the cell? Yeah, there are a lot of times in one direction, right? Like, let, let me give you a brief review of this. You're like, I don't know that, that, how do we make that down? <laughs> it's the pin junction, right? Remember, you got a P pipe, you got N pipe, you put them together. Right, then in between you, you, you have a, some, like a, they call it depletion region, right? They call it depletion region. So this region, they call it depletion region. Depletion region, so you can pick up, you can pick up. So this depletion forms like a wall, like, like a barrier. Only the voltage you can overcome the barrier, then you can flow through. Otherwise, you can't go through. Right? So this one is called one pin junction, right? Suppose if you put two, right, like a P, and P, right. And this one is like a BDT transistor, right? Uh, of course, you can put the N, P, and right. I mean, this one will give you the BDT, right? Because what, what is the BDT? Like, 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 like this one, right? Correct? Correct, right? You still remember this one? Yes, no. yes. Okay. Have you ever asked yourself, can I put four? Can I put four? 
，耶，然后再一直耶，你根本根本不。Which means you got a poor terminal device. The poor terminal device. Don't put four. This one is called a terrestrial. 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 That's four terminal. Can we put five? <laughs> you say no, right? Of course, you can put five, right? You can put five. Which means you can put more. Now the question is, this one you look at now is in two D, right? Two dimensional. I mean, I put in in one layer. Currently, you are put into 3D. What do I mean by 3D? 3D means, for example, you put something like this. This one in the middle. So in the bottom one, then you got next, you got another one. Maybe this one M, P, this one P. I, I mean, you got a two layers or three layers. You got different terminals. So, uh, does that mean you can only go maximum up to six? Yeah, you can organize it <laughs> in the four. <laughs> in the four. This why I'm talking about the Pinyin, right? I mean, you translate to the video. Did you cover this one? The fat F E T. In the G, D, F. Did you, did you cover this one? The game, dream, yeah. south. Where the depletion comes? Huh? Yeah, yeah, you got a depletion type, you got an enhanced type. I mean, depends on how do you form the channel. Yeah, yeah, I think we mostly look at enhanced. Yeah, the, the channel is from the heat, remember? The channel is induced by the heat. Right? The channel is induced. Currently, this one is also moving to 3D. I mean, previously all the game like stuff in the same way, and now they're moving to the Okay, this, I mean, of course, this one is not covered in our paper. I just want to let you know in order to make those kind of device. Once you understand the theory, it's very simple, right? PN, 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 PN. I mean, you got a lot of things. So, um. The effect of a diode is allow the signal to go through one direction. And let me ask you, what's the purpose of the diode? For example, given the signal, I mean, if I have the input like this one, right? After it goes through a diode, what do I have? Suppose you got an ideal diode. Right? Ideal diode, you will have this one, right? You will here. You want to have the positive part of the signal goes through, right? Negative part is gone. So this way you are trying to recover the outlook of the signal, right? For example, the shape. Even your original signal, I mean, for example, if your original signal very like this one. Uh, maybe I saw. Uh, So your dial will recover. Dial will recover the envelope, right? Envelope. Basically, this one function like a demodulator. Oh, air modulation, demodulator. Right? So this one I told you, you can use this one to pick up the AM transmission. Right? You need to a long wire. I mean, in terms of how way, five or ten meters. At about 10 meters, you use a transformer, you use a variable capacitor, then this one is big. This one you can use your earphone, I mean, like the other phone, smartphone. Connect to that. You can. Of course, this one you, you will have a limited number of channels you can put on. Yes, the earphones be active as many antennas as a phone. This one? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you can pick up on FM. Yeah. As, um, yeah, right, yeah, because as long as the cable length is uh, long enough, mm -hmm. you can even be functioning as an antenna. Like some of the Android phone, right? If you 
plug in the uh, headphone, you can hear, but if without the headphone, you cannot receive the signal. And the, the headphone will come in like an antenna. All right? So this one <coughs> is the fundamental one, right? Fundamental. I think some of the students tried this one before in the lab. In the lab, after the finishing lab, want to try something else. Even for the AM, you can send this right antenna, right? But make sure it's transmitted at short interval, otherwise you maybe receive a letter from the channels because they have the license to submit. We don't have the license. But for FM, FM and a number of channels, they got a free license. As long as you transmit power is lower than one watt, it's illegal. Which means in your home you can build up your FM transmission. And especially if you a two-story home and normally you got a transmitter on it. You can use that one to replace the like uh, your telephone or whatever. So this goes through FM. Okay, we stop here, and then you come back in like 10 minutes later, 10 plus to carry on with the noise. Cover like 500 meters. Right, so you look at the circuit. Basically, this part is the information signal. Pick up from the microphone. Then this one is the power amplifier. This one is like an uh, antenna. So this one uh, function like a modulator. I modulate this, uh, this one to modulate this one. Then amplify this one to send it out. According to the circuit diagram, remember? Um, yeah, this one. So, this part is a voltage divider, I mean, to provide the bias in height. This one is like a, a, a meter. Okay, this one uh, is like a common emitter. And this one is a uh, uh, filter is to reduce the DC. Just allow the AC signal to go through. This one we call it coupling capacitor. Right? So this part is uh, to provide the impedance matching. Then this one you can vary the frequency. So this part to provide the matching to the antenna. Alright? So you see the This part is the antenna. Right? Oh, what's the point? It's how to, how to make a, a simple antenna like this one. The higher the frequency, the smaller the antenna. Right? This one is the variable capacitor. Right? Variable capacitor. So this one, this is another inductor. This one, this inductor is a mid by a circuit. Um, for the antenna, would you just make it the highest, um, like for the lowest frequency? And make it the biggest possible based on the lowest frequency that, that, that is. Based on the highest frequency. Based on the highest frequency. 
Oh, sorry, the lowest frame. To so see how, how yeah. big it is, right? Yeah. How we don't refine it. And usually it's like a, um, one quarter of the big thing. Okay. Yeah. I, I think later in the fourth year, you have another paper called Value System. You're going to cover some of the in external design. Of course, the nowadays, the <coughs> antenna inside your smartphone is different from this one. See, printed a bit for like a more in terms of a patch antenna. Uh, you got some uh, printed trees on the PCB to pick up the signal. Right? Uh, so, this one, if you have time, you can have a try to make the, the FM transmitter. Right? So next, we are going to look at the noise, right? Uh, noise is everywhere inside the circuit, right? Because we deal with electronic circuit, right? Electronic circuit is basically, uh, we study the, the movement of the electron, right? The electron goes through the wire. You remember inside the wire, it's got different atoms. Maybe you've got copper, got other types of impurity inside, so the electrons will be interfered by the atomic atoms and cause a lot of noise. So the noise uh, in the old days, I mean if you switch on your AM or FM receiver, sometimes you can hear the noise, right? Then in the old days, if you have the analog TV, right? If the uh, TV signal is strong, when you see those kind of noise, like no effect, right? Then I still see noise, right? Yes. Uh, so how do we uh, quantify, I mean, how do we measure the noise? Basically, we study the uh, signal to noise ratio, which means we look at the power from the signal, we look at the power of the noise, and then we take the ratio, right? The, ratio. the larger the ratio, the stronger the, the signal, right? The better the signal quality. So in terms of a linear value, we just take a ratio. A signal of the signal power divided by noise power. Then if you convert to a decibel, <coughs> right? Remember decibel? Power, you can convert to dBm. How do we convert to dBm? dBm is such a value, right? Remember any power value? You can convert that to dBm, right? Say, uh, Given the power, for example, input is like a one bar, right? You may want to know this is how many dBm. How, how do we come up with that? Well, Basically, we take 10 long, we got 10, and corresponding to dBm, divided by 1 millibar, right? And 1 millibar. Then you will get the corresponding uh, dBm. I mean, in this case, if you have 1 bar, how many dBm? So it will be one watt divided by one milliwatt. So basically, one watt is equal to how many milliwatt? Mm -hmm. Sorry, right. 10,000, you take a, a logarithm, take out 10. So basically, this one will give you 30 dBm. Right? 30 dBm. Now, without the calculation, let me ask you, if I input is uh, like a 0 0.5 watt, right? How many dBm? How many dBm? Um. You forgot, right, minus 3 dB? So this one you can use 77 dBm. <coughs> you believe me? If you do not believe, okay, take out the calculator, try this one. 0 0.5 divided by 1 milliwatt, then after that take a logarithm, multiply by 10. Do you have a calculator? Mm -hmm. You have a calculator on your phone, right? The Make sure next time you bring your calculator every time you come to an uh, engineering class, right? Yes. 
Advanced calculation? No? Yes. I want you guys to practice because in the final exam you need to use your calculator a lot, right? The amount of time you spend on the calculator, the less the better, right? The less the amount of time you spend on the calculator, the, the more time you're going to spend the, right, on the answer. Is the answer correct? Then resolve this one. If I change it to 0 0.25, what's the value? Right. So in this way, you 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 will be uh, familiar with the minus three dB. That's why it's how useful this one in in engineer, especially in electrical engineer. Minus three dB just take the linear value by half, right? Then look at the dB value just minus three, minus three, right? So that's why if you want to uh, look at the ratio, just use the signal power in dBm minus the noise power in dBm. So remember, dBm minus dBm, what you get is dB. There are two different units, right? dBm is a power union in decibel. dB is just a ratio, it's a no union, it's a dimension. Right? Okay, next one. This is a very interesting effect due to noise. I mean, for example, consider amplifier, right? Power amplifier. So before the signal goes in the amplifier, you got the input power, you got the corresponding signal to noise ratio, right? After you go through the power amplifier, of course your output power will be higher than input power, right? Because the, this one is a power amplifier, you amplify the signal. Now the issue is the signal to noise ratio is actually smaller than the input signal to noise ratio. Why? Which means during this process, you not only amplify the signal, you also amplify the power, right? You only the power of the noise. In addition to that, you introduce extra noise, right? You amplify the signal, you amplify the noise, then you introduce extra noise. So that's why the signal to quality is the worst. Signal to noise ratio is the worst now, right? So the amplification is not the SNR is supposed to be. I added here the amplifier. And which means, although the signal power is higher, but the signal to noise ratio is lower. So we look at the num number of types of noise. So we have the external noise, we get the internal noise. Internal noise is coming <coughs> from the circuit, if the circuit is destroyed. External noise is coming from the environment. For example, the industrial noise, like the motors, generators, like the manufacturing equipment, this one will produce noise. Right? Another one is like a lightning, like the electrostatic, for example, you're wearing a uh, clothes made of wool or other types, like uh, uh, polyester, those kind of material. Right? Every night you go to bed, you take off the clothes, you may notice the electrostatic. Especially if you turn off your light, you can see the track. So this one is the one type of uh, <coughs> noise of uh, atmosphere noise. Another one is the from the space. For example, the radiation from the sun or from other planets, right? So this one is got a wide range of noise, like the one mentioned, alpha, gamma, beta, this kind of uh, radiation. So the internal noise we are talking about is uh, happening with inside the circuit, right? You got a thermal noise. What is thermal noise? Thermal noise is a random uh, motion of the electron. Remember the electron is uh, moving everywhere. Not in uh, any pattern, right? 
Although, I mean, uh, we say uh, the electrons is uh, moving around the atom, right? The nuclei. But some of the electrons will become free electrons. Right? We move from one nuclei to another, right? So the motion of the electrons will be affected by temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster they move, right? Faster they move, we introduce some noise. I believe introduce noise. Remember, electrons they carry electricity, right? The amount of electricity when they move, they induce magnetic field, right? Magnetic field. This one is called noise. Another one is the semiconductor noise. Because inside the semiconductor, you call the impurities. For example, <coughs> most of the time we use the silicon. And then you have other types of uh, atoms <coughs> We have the intermodulation noise, like the one I mentioned uh, for the filter, right? So the filter may not be uh, perfect, so some kind of a signal will be injected as noise. So in this paper, we mainly look at the thermal noise, right? Thermal noise, we have a formula, right? Yes, it looks like, I mean, we like uh, mathematics <laughs> to quantify the values. Otherwise, without the numbers, it's very hard to quantify the values, right? So we introduce a formula to measure how strong the noise is, right? Uh, so the noise voltage is given by this formula, 0 4 times k times c times 3 times r. So first of all, what is k? K is a very important uh, constant. It's a Boltzmann constant. Boltzmann constant is, uh, of course, in uh, quantum physics, right? So you can get it. Measure the energy gain from the temperature, right? So then it's 1 on 3 times 10 to the power minus 3. You probably want to ask why why do we have a minus one point three instead of two or instead of one point four? Behind this one got a certain uh, theoretical derivations, right? To show that this constant is one point three times ten to the power minus twenty three. Uh, so in the binding them, I don't expect you to memorize this one. I, I give you this constant, right? But you need to Depreciate this one from the K we used in the ADC, right? In the ADC, we use another K. What's that K? The resolution of the ADC, right? Make sure to notice the difference, right? I, I unit write in different ways. This one is still like a, a, a different letter, right? K, that one is a normal K. This one is a, a, a different sum. T is the temperature, right? But this temperature is in another union, in Kelvin, right? Kelvin. Uh, it's different from the normal temperature we use. Uh, for example, in New Zealand, we use degree, right? Celsius degree, it's a degree Celsius, right? And in US, we use another temperature. But Kelvin is the international standard, right? International for example, if I told you uh, today the temperature is 16 degrees, if I want to convert to Kelvin, what do I do? Multiply, I mean, uh, plus. Plus, right? 16 plus 273 from one plus, right? So this one will be your first one, uh, Kelvin, right? Yeah. <coughs> Again, in the final exam, I, I don't expect you to remember this way. I'll give you the formula. But you need to know, you need to convert the T, because usually the temperature is given in the Celsius degree. You need to convert to Kelvin. Otherwise, you plug in here, you get a wrong answer, right? You may ask, what was the point, right? The T is the unit, right? Only is to check whether you understand the difference between the absolute temperature and the 
the, the I mean the difference between the two units, right? Sales terms and uh, the sales is very different. B, what is B? Bandwidth, right? Bandwidth. What is bandwidth? I will have two types of bandwidth. One is the signal bandwidth, another one is the channel bandwidth, right? Signal bandwidth is uh, very similar to, like, I, I always use the house relocation as an example. For example, how large is your refrigerator? How large is your dishwasher? I mean, the size of your stuff like a signal bandwidth. But what is the channel bandwidth? Uh, uh, like the width, the, the capacity of your, <coughs> for example, your lorry is your higher, right? Or the airplane, the, the character. This, this one is the channel bandwidth. So, I mean, these two are very important, right? Because in order for you to send the signal through the channel, you need to make sure your signal bandwidth must be smaller than or equal to the channel bandwidth, right? Mm. Otherwise, you cannot go through. Right? Uh, even you go through, part of the signal is chopped off. Okay. And this one is true. Sometimes, uh, um, for example, you got a garage, the waste is only three meters. Then suddenly you got a new car, the car is about four meters wide. You want to climb in the garage, what do you have? Either your garage is damaged or your car is damaged, right? This one is the two, I mean in terms of electronic communication system. You want to send the signal with a larger bandwidth? <coughs> Either you damage the, the, the channel. You damage, how do you damage the channel? Which means you occupy more than one channel, which means the, the, the operator or the owner of the adjacent channel will send you a a lot of students, right? On the native play, your signal will be chopped off, which means your signal will be distorted, right? You cannot send the full thing. So that's why you need to understand the bandwidth very well, right? You got a signal bandwidth, you got a channel bandwidth. How do we calculate signal bandwidth? Remember, you have two types of signals, right? A baseband and passband, right? Baseband or the broadband. Baseband, you look at the highest frequency because if the baseband signal is frequency is close to zero hertz, close to DC. Then for passband, how do you calculate the bandwidth? Using the highest minus the lowest, right? And then you look at this. I mean, this one is very similar to use to the one, the, for example, you want to measure the, the length of this one, right? Then suppose you have a ruler, then you, so this one is a 11 centimeter, this one is a 14 centimeter, then if I want to know the width, for example, the width, what the value? Three, right? We use this one to minus this one, right? It's three centimeters. I mean, if I draw the signal in terms of frequency, for example, this one is a frequency common. This one is the F min, this one is the F max. To ask for the bandwidth, bandwidth is just F max minus F min, right? And this one is called the pass by signal. This one is the analog to how we measure the width using a ruler, right? The maximum value minus the minimum value. All right, so. Remember the B denotes the bandwidth. The bandwidth is usually given in terms of hertz, megahertz, gigahertz. So you need to convert to hertz. Right? Convert to hertz. R, what is R? R is the resistance. Right? R is the resistance. So remember in the ADC part, we have another R, right? What's that R? R is the peak value to the RMS value, the ratio, right? R. I told you, make sure you know the difference between that R and the resistor, right? Okay, so 
Sky noise, flicker noise, the sound noise, this part is quite already. I mean, there are different types of noise. Basically, we look at the thermal noise. We use this one to measure it. Another one is the AWDN, we call that LED white Gaussian noise. This one does not exist. This one is called uh, artificial noise. It's like created by human. I already want to ask, so why, do we, why do we need this one? Why do we need this one? Because when you design a system, you want to use a computer to simulate the system, right? Simulate the system to make sure your system can work in reality. So you need to purposely introduce some noise to your model, right? This line is called the artificial noise treated by ourselves, by human, right? Additive means you can add this noise to any signal, just using the plug. Right? White, what, what does it mean by white? White means the, the power density, right? The power density of this noise. So what I want to ask, what does the power density come from? Power density is talking about the power distribution with respect to frequency, right? White means the power density is something like this. The power distribution over the frequency is constant. You want to know why we use white, because later we will see another noise for pink noise. But, uh, other types of uh, we use the color to differentiate this noise. So white noise means the power distribution is constant, right? Constant. <coughs> Which means if I uh, say one megahertz, the power density is this one. One megahertz, the power density is still the same. This one is constant from the white noise. Gaussian. What is Gaussian? Gaussian. We are talking about the uh, amplitude. Okay. Talking about the amplitude here in time domain. The amplitude of the noise is Gaussian, which means they have a normal distribution. Normal distribution is something like that. And you have a mu, you have a sigma, right? So usually the mu is zero, zero volts. Sigma is called a standard deviation, which means. Here you, you see the meter is changing, right? That looks like a random value, right? If you calculate the mean, how do you calculate the mean? Sum up all the values, divided by the numbers, you get zero, right? This is, this is why I mean the zero, mean zero. This one, the sigma, standard deviation, right? What's the effect of standard deviation? The smaller the value, which means the, 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 this one, the shape will be like a narrow one. The larger value, the like the spread of the distribution. Which right? means the larger the value, the, the larger the variations. The smaller the value, the smaller the variations. Right? Remember, the AWGN is created by us to do the simulation. Right? <coughs> so, next. We want to look at how do we measure noise, right? Just now we introduced one, the noise voltage, right? Noise voltage. So now we, uh, so this part is show you how do we derive the formula. Just now I show you the noise voltage, right? Suppose we have the uh, resistance, any resistance, right? You have the, this one is a bit uh, hard to understand, right? Something like this. I take a piece of resistor. We are trying to use the resistor as the voltage source. Why? Because inside you got the noise, right? We want to use the noise voltage as a voltage source, right? As a voltage source. So in order to measure how large is the voltage voltage, uh, the noise voltage, right? So we split that resistor into two parts. One is the 
noisily register, which means inside there's no noise. This one is the voltage source, right? I mean, this two actually they combine in the one this. So in order to measure the power, right? In order to measure the power, we need to connect a load, right? Connect a load. Which load to connect? I mean, looking at the maximum power transfer, right? We need to make sure this one must be equal to this one, so that we can get maximum power. So you notice that if you're connecting this way, then the, the power density is given by this one. Or in this, maybe the for white noise is given by this one. So you can calculate the power, I mean, you substitute your auto numbers inside, you will get this formula. You get this one. Okay. That's how we derive this noise voltage. I mean, it's from here. Okay. I mean, of course, for this table, I, I I don't expect you to derive this one as long as you understand this one is good enough. Right. So how what do I mean by understand? Yeah. You look at this one, you know the factors which you affect the noise voltage. For example, the higher the temperatures, the higher the temperature, the higher the noise, right? That's why your computer, right, you have a fan, right? You got a computer fan to reduce the temperature, right? That's why most of the data centers are built up in the, the country with very low temperature. The lower the temperature, the better, because you don't need to spend a lot of money to cool down the, the server, right? Because the higher the temperature, the higher the noise. The higher the noise, you got a lot of errors, right? How about this one? Bandwidth. The larger the bandwidth, the larger the noise. What, what does that mean to us? Yeah. You only need to use the necessary bandwidth to not, you, for example, if you only need one mega, do not use one giga, right? If you use one kilohertz, do not use one mega. Because the less the bandwidth, the less the noise. How about this one? R? Similar R. I mean, neutral resistance. The larger the value, the larger the noise. Right. Okay, so next one, we look at the, we introduce another factor, right? Called the noise factor. Noise factor, we take the ratio of another two ratios, right? Remember, the signal to noise ratio is a ratio. Signal power to noise power, but at the input, right? At the input. Then signal to noise ratio at the output. Then we use this ratio to determine how good is a, a, a component. For example, the power amplifier, right? Look at how good is this power amplifier in terms of a noise performance. So we use the input signal to noise ratio divided by the output. So you can see that this one is always larger than one, right? Correct? Right? Because any device, you cannot make the noise lesser. Any device, the minimum is you didn't introduce any extra noise. This one will be one. But most of the time, you will introduce extra noise. So this value is larger than one. Right? Larger than that. The larger the, the worse, right? The larger the worse the device. Because which means the, the quality of the signal becomes worse and worse. It's on the input, it's on the output, right? Remember, there is a temperature. Yes, every time we measure the noise uh, power, we need a temperature. When we talk about the noise power, they add a certain uh, noise. Uh, uh, temperature level. The higher the temperature, the higher the noise power, right? So this one is have a has a name called noise factor. So if we convert this one to decibel, F is noise factor, right? Then we got the noise giga. NF, right? NF is in decibel, F is in the ratio, the linear value. So we 
uh, just introduce a, a new union, right? So next one, uh, look at the noise factor of a single system. And don't worry about this one, just show you this video. So here, I give you three uh, new uh, terms, right? Noise factor is noise. Noise factor is just the input signal to noise radio divided by the output signal to noise radio, right? Noise figure. What is noise figure? Noise figure is equal to noise factor. Take the log of bit of ten, right? Multiply by ten. Then another one is the noise temperature, right? Noise temperature. Remember, for the noise uh, figure, we have a reference temperature. What what is the reference temperature? You forgot that. That's amazing. Yeah, the reference temperature is here, two hundred ninety p. Two hundred ninety p, roughly. So if you convert that one, I mean the noise, to an equivalent noise temperature, then you can see uh, how noisy is the circuit, right? The higher the noise temperature, the, the noisy the circuit, right? So in these three uh, values, remember what, what, what is the purpose of for us to introduce the three values? What is the problem? Why, why do we, I mean, why do we calculate these three numbers? To, to, to lower the number. No. Why do we, I mean, my, my question is, why do we want to calculate the number? does not mean we want to lower the number. For example, given the system, why do we want to know the three numbers? Now we want to know the performance, right? The noise performance of the circuit, right? In other words, we want to use a number to quantify the noise performance of the circuit, right? We want to understand whether this circuit is good or not in terms of noise, right, in terms of noise. And this one is similar to the ADC. I mentioned for the ADC, whenever you, you go to buy an ADC, you, number, you have a number of parameters, right? Use the parameters to choose. For example, you got a resolution, right? You know the higher the resolution, the better. I mean, this one is similar to like uh, you got a, a driving license if you want to buy your car, right? You buy your car, what are the numbers you're going to look at? I mean, the first one is the engine. Engine, <laughs> how power that? I mean, you have to first look at the mileage, right? And this one is over 100,000, 100, which gets no need to buy, right? So mileage, what else? Engine, right? How powerful is the engine? What else? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wheels. How many wheels? I got four wheels. You got two. <coughs> let, let me ask you. Um, what's the difference between four wheel drive and the all wheel drive? Different technology. You see the same, right? It's a, it's a computer. The ones controlled the can you change the ratio of the wheel. Okay. Uh, Any other idea? Uh, all wheel drive. Okay. I'm talking about the all wheel drive and the all wheel drive. I know because some other is all wheel drive. They want to fix it. Maybe each wheel has its own set of engine for it to go all wheel drive. No. Any, any difference? Yeah. Oh, this one is straight. This one is adaptive, right? Yeah. Uh, 
It means that line you can uh, make it to two wheel drive. Any other difference? No. Let me tell the difference. All wheel drive mean, mean you may not have four wheels. You may have only one wheel. Like a unicycle is all wheel drive. Okay. All wheel drive, you make sure you got four wheels. Right? <laughs> all wheel drive, you probably got three wheels. So you got I don't know, can you go to the wheel You buy the same, that's why you mentioned the track, right? This one is adaptive, this one is straight. All right? So, come back to this one. I mean, why we start these three numbers? Because we want to quantify. For example, you want to buy a power amplifier, right? A noise amplifier, or even a mixer. You want to understand how good is the circuit, right? So the noise figure, noise vector, noise are the numbers you can look at. Basically, the lower the number, the better the noise performance you can get, right? So you can use this number to quantify it. Now the issue is, if you, if you the, the circuit, you've got a two sub circuit, right? For example, you power in five, you may need a, uh, 40 dB of gain, but each stage you only have a 20 dB, right? So you have the noise figure for each stage. Now we want to know the overall effect, right? Overall, so how do we calculate the overall noise figure? Then we have a Ferris formula. Ferris formula basically tells you if you have a number of six, for example, especially power by capacity, right? Or I have other, for example, here about power by one, power by two, right? I mean, I know the noise factor one, noise factor two, right? Now I want to know if I connect them in capacity here, right? What's the overall effect? What is the overall noise factor? Or what is the overall noise figure? So in order to, to calculate that one, we need to use the Ferris formula. That Ferris formula tells us in the system, you have a number of components. You connect the component in casting. So you want to understand how good is the the system, the, the overall performance, right? So from here, we notice that the, the effect of the first stage, what, what is the first stage? You look at the way the input signal, right? Look at the in input signal. The first component give you the first F1, F1 corresponding to here. Look from the input, right? So, which means the performance of the first stage will, will affect your overall performance directly, right? The second stage, the effect will be uh, is okay, right? Because the effect will be uh, reduced by the gain of the first stage, right? Okay. The second stage minus one will be divided by the first stage, which means if my first stage, the gain is very large, basically, I can forget all the remaining steps. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Which means, suppose if G1 is a very large number, right? G1 is a very large number. If basically, I can forget the remaining stage. I only care about the first stage. Okay. Let me ask you another question. When do you when do you care about noise? When you're trying to maintain your original signal integrity. Yeah, when you're trying to maintain the quality. When do you pay extra attention to noise? Is when your signal is very weak, right? Signal is very weak. I mean this one is similar. Later, you, you become married, you got a baby, when the baby is very young, you need to have extra effort. The signal is the same, right? If the signal is in terms of like a nano one, a pico one, it's very big, 
right? Can be mimics the with noise. If you do not take care about the noise, the all I mean the noise can override your signal. Once the signal is overridden by noise, then your signal is calm. The information is calm, right? <coughs> so that's why we uh, uh, we care about the noise, especially at the receiver side. Remember? The receiver side, we are going to recover the signal from the environment, right? Sometimes the signal, the incoming signal is very, very basic. How we keep it? Uh, because you may look at the power and the like in terms of uh, picobots, right? Picobots means central power minus 12 watts. And sometimes like uh, the minus 90 dBm, right? Minus 90 dBm. I mean, if you convert this one back to up, you can see how weak the signal is, right? How weak the signal is. Very weak. Weak. Very weak weak means even a slight strong noise can override the signal. So that's why we need to make sure that the, the circuit is less, I mean, uh, as, as noiseless as possible, right? So here I need to remind you, right? In this formula, all the values uh, you need to use the linear values. You cannot use the dB, right? Convert to plus F is the linear value. K is not the All right? So this one is uh, how do we reduce noise? First one, we use twisted pair, right? Twisted pair. This one, because the current flow in operate direction, you can cancel the magnetic field. Another one is using shielding, which means you can use the aluminum foil to wrap around the circuit. Right? To reduce. Another one is to reduce the bandwidth, like the one I mentioned. Another one is to uh, use uh, power supply decoupling, which means you can uh, direct the noise to the ground to reduce the noise. Then you keep the uh, ground lead as short as possible. Just remember any wire, as long as it's got a finite length, this one is actually an antenna, can pick up signal from the environment. Even you have a, like a one millimeter, this one is an antenna, right? So that's why you need to keep the ground lead as short as possible to reduce the current. Maintain the separation between the high level and the low level <laughs> to reduce the coupling. Yes? Um, so if you have a PCB, and you, you're making the tracks for it. Um, if you use like this, uh, like with your technique, with like a uh, circuit flying kind of tracks, so like zigzags, um, and it increases the length of the track, but like it's, I thought it was for impedance matching. So yeah, sometimes it's for impedance matching. Yeah, yeah, does it have to be the same length? You want yeah. to get the same resistance? Yeah. That's why you also function like a antenna. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that will reduce noise, or that increase noise? Increase noise. Yeah. Yeah, but you are looking at the power side. You want to maximum the power. Okay, so yeah. maximum power, but not <laughs> the noise. Is noise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's why you need a uh, trade off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So another one is you can use the uh, single coupler to reduce the noise. Right? Then uh, this one I'm talking about the coupling. For example, you got one twist, you got a high voltage, you got another twist, a low voltage. If they are close enough, just the magnetic field you cover. Right? Remember, you, you got the current flow, you got the magnetic field around it. Right? So that's the end of this one. Um, end of lecture, I think, right? So um, Friday, I'm going to give you some tips for assignment. Right? Then class tutorial, tutorial session. Right?